Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Barham Engines. Right guys, so as you can see, first thing this morning, we're just doing a set of, well, opening up a set of valve pockets on these Alpha Pistons. These are for Bob Dove. And um, we're doing exactly what we did for his son, Paul. Obviously it works for me. Um, so what we're doing is we're opening up the pockets on both sides, inlet and exhaust, about one millimeter. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the pistons in the lathe and we're gonna turn the outside out about a millimeter in and about a millimeter down, just so it clears the gasket um, or any potential failure of sort of touching the gasket. And that's what he wants, so that's what we're doing. As you can see, we're set up here in a similar way to how we do the Cosworth ones. Um, although we'd, we're using the existing pins and just We've got two of them either side and just clamping them down and you can see I've almost finished that pocket but we're just easing them out about a millimetre all the way round. So what we do, fire up the machine and we just ease this down very 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 slowly. Until it just goes down to the, the level of the existing pocket, really. And there we go. What I do, what I normally do, if I'm just opening up existing pockets, I normally slope the piston very, very slightly that way, so we're not trying to cut, you know, the inside of the existing pocket platform. We're just going right to the outer edge, as you can see there. That's all done, we'll turn it round and um, do the other side. Right, so here is the VW VR6 engine. I noticed a few people in the last sort of few videos asked if we could do sort of a build thread or sort of build video. Um, I haven't got time to do a complete, you know, in-depth video of one, but I'll sort of do a sort of a mini step-by-step -step guide, at least for the bottom end. So, the block is all clean. Uh, it's been obviously jet washed. So as you can see, the, the crank is in the block. Obviously, the main bearings are in the block as well. We have ARP main studs in this one so the torque settings are very slightly different. So the torque settings on this one is 60 foot pounds. Uh, the original torque settings on these are about 30 newton meters plus 108 degrees so it's obviously it's different. So what we'll probably do is nip these studs down to 20 foot pounds or 15 then maybe 30 then 60. So we'll do it in a sequence like we do the center head. So we'll start on this center cap and work outwards. So we'll do this cap uh, then this cap, etc. Right, so cap lubed up. Make sure the tag on the bearing sits on the same side. And there. Make sure that's seated properly. And then we see the last one. Right, so get these washers on the main studs. Frush rusher on this is on the cap number six, which you already put on off camera. Get these washers on. So we'll lube these um, caps up. So it's also worth mentioning as well, making sure this bearing is sitting in the center of the cap. Obviously you've got a locating tab there, but sometimes you can find the other and the bearing can sort of sit squiffy. So it's worth just double checking um, that is center on the cap but i'm fairly happy with that and these other two look fine so we um lube this bearing up right so the nuts for the main stud kit um as i said a minute ago 60 foot pounds but we have to make sure we use the alp um assembly lube um so when we lube them up we lube the threads up and we make sure we lube the nut base here as well right so that's all the main caps torqued down up to 60 foot pounds Plenty of assembly lube to not be shy of it. So, look at that. Spins by hand, lovely, just to the end of the nose of the crank. No tight spots, just spin that with your finger. Right, so end float, we'll check the end float. So, 5 thou on the um, feeder gauge. Can be a bit tricky getting this in sometimes. So that's 5 thou in there, so we'll try 6 and 7. So six goes in, this is a seven, so this seven is a bit tighter. It's quite a tight seven thousand. So I think we're a, we're a bit about seven thousand inflow. I think eight's gonna to be too much. Right, 
stops at eighth hour. Goes in very slightly, but it's a bit tight. So I think we're going to probably say, well, say seven half hour. You wanted to. Um, obviously, there's a few ways, or well, there's two ways to do this. You can use a feeder gauge method like I have there. Uh, you can also use a dial gauge. Uh, on the end you can also have a dial gauge on the end of the block um, and the dial gauge obviously on the crank and you can push uh, the crank back and forth and see what the clearance is either way to be honest with you I think it works fine um, some people prefer to use a dial gauge method feeler gauges I've always used and never had a problem right then guys a little update on the pre-cross flow engine here this is the one that we showed in a previous video that Isaac stripped and um, it came into us the guy bought it all been done as we all know um, and he just wanted us to strip it, check it, see what we got, see what bits are in it, etc. Um, so I've reported back to him, everything looked great, except for one little issue. Now, when Isaac, before he stripped it down, he tried turning the engine over and he said it was a little bit tight or he thought it was a little bit tight, but I was a bit sort of, I said, obviously we've got to check it all anyway. And um, it depends why it was, why it was tight really, but um, we didn't think much of it. Obviously checked everything. Um, I told you last time that the, the block face was not great, the finish on it, and nor was the head face. So we've been through everything. The bores measure perfect, so it's all been bored properly. Obviously new pistons, this thing's never ran. Um, the bearings are all good. Now the only thing different with it is, it's got steel, steel main caps, which is good. So it's all been line bored. We've checked all the, um, all the tolerances. Everything's great, the crank spins freely. Um, and all the rods, obviously, you can see all the rods have been sized. Um, now, when I went to check the sizes of the rods, <laughs> Isaac, obviously, when he took them out, he stamped, stamped them one, one being at the front, and then we got two, three, four. So that's all how it's come out. So this here is exactly as it's come out. Now, number one, I put the cap on, didn't think anything of it, measured it, absolutely um, perfect. That one's fine. So I think it was number three that I had, had the issue with. Stamped it number three there, which is how it's come out. We turn it round, you've got number four on the cap. So that is number four rod really, but they put it in number three hole. So they've got number three cap there and number four there. So basically all the rods are in the wrong holes to what they've marked them at originally. Um, and two of the caps are on the wrong rods and one feels absolutely horrendous this one if you if you put that cap down tight there's a big old groove there so they've they've either slung it together which i can't imagine they have because obviously you've got a full set of gaskets it's all been built right and it was all torqued down to spec you could feel it when you undone everything they spent the time boring it and doing everything perfect and how much the line boring is with those caps is going to be big money and then they've put the wrong pistons down the wrong holes or the wrong rods and then they put two of the caps on the wrong rods so this thing as soon as it fired up this thing would have scrapped the rods scrapped the crank and uh, more than likely damaged the bores and pistons and made hell of a mess um, so that is one reason why guys we all we never take it for granted um, when people say that this engine has all been done it needs to be stripped. I personally would never buy an engine that had been built by someone else, even if it looked all good, because this engine obviously has had all the machining done and the tolerances are perfect. So they've spent all the time and effort and money on that. But then they put the two caps in the wrong way around and they put all the rods in the wrong holes. So not good guys, that could have cost an absolute fortune and scrapped the motor. And um, so fortunately we found that and um, we can rectify it, put the right caps on. We're gonna obviously re-measure it all um, if it needs sizing. Sometimes if you put the caps with those little dowels, if you put the caps on the wrong hole, on the wrong rods, torque them down, um, they can sort of distort the caps or, or, or bend the locators and they're gonna need resizing again. So we're gonna have to check that. Um, so yeah, that was, I suppose, in a way, a lucky one. Right, so I'm just pre-filled or pre-filling the um, oil pump um, and using this oil pump shaft here to just make sure there's uh, oil running around the whole thing, which is fine. 
Right, so the brand new oil pump is on. Um, I've had to actually modify, well I say modify these bolts. Um, the old oil pump, the holes were slightly bigger for the oil pump bolts. So rather than drill these out bigger, I just obviously ground the bolt or the shank of the bolt down very slightly so they fit in because they were too tight. Um, so these now should go in fine. So see if we can get them started, get this lined up. Yeah, it's going lovely. Happy days. We'll get that bolted in. Well, we'll leave it like that and then we'll put the pickup on them and we'll bolt the whole thing on together. Now, unfortunately, guys, I've had to jump in here because we have missed the process. And I know if I don't jump in and sort of explain why, you guys are going to say, hang on a minute, how did those pistons and rods magically appear in the block? Um, it's because I did that when Paul went home. Um, I managed to get them in and... I didn't record it, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm just going to explain how we get the pistons in on the VR6 because obviously you've got the problem of being a flat block like a four cylinder, but with a very narrow V. So the pistons have got to go in at an angle. So it's not like a conventional four where you use a ring clamp and put the pistons down and the rings go all in one go. Uh, so what we've done is I've made these various sized um, sort of they are like a ring clamp really but what we do is we feed the piston into these they've got a slight taper at the top and I've done them for all the different sizes we use on the VR6 and then what we do we lay that on the block because it's the right angle um, and then once it's placed on the block the pistons go down the holes nice and easy so that is how we do that. Right so the next step of this engine is I'm going to put the head studs in so we have some brand new ARP head studs um, right here lovely pieces of kit these um, so if, if anyone's wondering sort of what the point is this is is if you look at the thread on there and the thread on that end the thread pitch is different so essentially this is the original um, thread pitch for the original head bolt and this is different this is a finer thread so basically um, with a finer thread you can get a better clamping force so this just screws into the block where the original uh, head bolt will go and then obviously we have nuts and washers to put on. Screw these in, get these ones in. The only thing might be worth mentioning is down there that's not for head studs that's for this. So this is uh, I believe to be an oil restrictor of some sort so it was worth if you build one of these take these out and give it clean and make sure this valve inside is moving. This one's fine so we can put that back in, in a second. Right, so before we can put the head on, we have to at least partly assemble uh, the chain assembly. So I've made myself enough room here with the um, engine stand. Um, if I thought about it a bit more, I could have probably modified it to fit on the side so I had a better um, view of the timing chain set up, but we can work with this. So we have a brand new timing chain kit. So we obviously got the bottom and top chain. We've got the three guides. Um, we've got the tensioning guide and I'm cleaning the sprockets up as well. So that's ideal. The front cover uh, I painted and I put a new seal in. So this is all ready to go. It's all been bee blasted and cleaned up. So I'm happy with that. Uh, so I've had a look at the auto data timing procedure. So what we'll do, we'll get this, um, the bottom chain on and the top chain on loosely, because obviously the front cover, the top of the front cover acts like part of the head, essentially. So if you just slide it on, try and slide it on into a certain place at least. And there we go. So the head gasket obviously comes out to here. So we need to get this at least on and the chain on partly anyway, before we go much further. So we'll crack on that right now. So guys, thanks ever so much for watching today's video. As you can see down there, the VR6 is all done and palleted up. Um, We've only shown you the first half of the build up from Paul there on that. Um, so the second half will be Friday's video, unfortunately. Um, so stay tuned, guys. Until then, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in another one. Thank you.